Amen. We're going to be in Luke chapter 10. I want to turn to Luke chapter 10. This morning we will get a brief reminder of some important things that are core value for our church family and for Christians in general. We'll get to that in a moment. Um, as you know, as Andy Williams said, Christmas is the most, what kind of time of the year? Wonderful. wonderful. December and Christmas can be wonderful or terrible, depending on how it goes for you. We can be busy. We can see a lot of people. We can eat just enough or not enough or too many cookies. Too much food, too much drink. Sometimes we can have generational dysfunction when all those people that have, you know, created family wounds in your life are all on the same table, around the table, smiling faces and steak knives. It can be a season of unmet expectations. It can be a time of loneliness. Not to mention those kids jingle belling and everyone telling you, be of good cheer. Shut up. And then we come to January where we make resolutions to not drink, to not eat too much, to be happy, to set boundaries, and to run a 5K or something like that. It's a, it's a wonderful time. So I thought we could spend some time with some friends of ours, Mary, Martha, and our Lord Jesus. Luke chapter 10, verse 38. We're going to read to the end of the chapter. And basically what we're going to do, in a way, we're going to have a little bit of a Bible study this morning where we are going to break down each verse uh, together. So let's read it together. If you're watching online, I hope you can join up with us um, and read along. Luke chapter 10, verse 38. Now, as they were traveling along, this is Jesus and his disciples, he entered a village and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. And she had a sister called Mary who was seated at the Lord's feet listening to his word. But Martha was distracted with all her preparations. And she came up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the serving alone? Tell her to help me. But the Lord answered her and said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and bothered about so many things. But only one thing is necessary. For Mary has chosen the good part, which shall not be taken away from her. This is the word of the Lord. And so in this record, as you see, two sisters welcoming Jesus. Uh, there's a lot that's happening. And this is a great message for this time of year, prone to busyness and preparation and commitments and things like that. And we find a contrast here between Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus and Martha, who is troubled and busied by her much preparation. So let's go back uh, to the beginning. Tom, if you just go back to that first verse 38. Um, I think we see something here in verse uh, 38. Now, as they were traveling along, he entered a village and a woman named Martha did what? welcomed him into her home. Remember last week when we were in Acts, we saw how Paul was welcoming people and Jesus would welcome people. And here Martha is welcoming Jesus into her home. And, and doesn't it always start like that? Like you have grand expectations and the right motivation gets you to do the right thing. But as we'll see, it goes south. But initially, Martha welcomes Jesus into her home. She has a good desire to have the Lord near but then we get to verse 40. You can flip to 40. Martha was distracted with all her preparations. And she came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the serving alone? Then tell her to help me. The Greek word for distracted is the Greek word perispao. Say perispao. I so hoped that this word, paraspao, is where we got our word spastic, but it's not. And so that's a sermon for another day. But what it means, it literally means to draw away. Martha was drawn away from where she should have been. She was distracted. And to be distracted, as you know, is having one's thoughts or attentions drawn away unable to concentrate or give attention to something. Uh, how many of you are prone to distraction? 
All right? Some of you should have raised your hand but didn't because you got distracted and didn't know my question anymore. And so this time of year and our lives in general are filled with opportunities for distraction, right? Remember, Martha uh, is, is welcoming Jesus, but Mary's in the right place. She's focused on who? She's focused on Jesus. Martha is distracted. And, and, I, and I thought that um, oftentimes there's not one thing that keeps taking our attention away from something. is that many things take our attention from the one thing. And so Martha is distracted by what the text tells us are all her preparations. All her preparations. This is the Greek word pulos diconia, which really means, it literally means much service. And so Martha, think about it, what part of the acts of service that Martha was doing were sinful? None of them. It didn't say that she was distracted because she was watching a horror movie in the other room or whatever. She wasn't doing that. But it was her much service. Even these good things became overwhelming and took her away, drew her away, distracted her from the most important thing. She wasn't doing anything actively bad, but it was her ability to give attention to Jesus that was crowded out by her busyness and all the things on her plate. And so distractions and busyness may seem harmless initially. But eventually, when our lives become unruly and our lives get full and we get busy and then we get distracted from what really matters, our heart begins to change. And how do we know that? Well, look what happens in this verse. Verse 40, Martha was distracted with all her preparations and she now comes up to Jesus and says, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the serving alone? Tell her to help me. Sounds like it could be my house. But notice what happens, preparations, busyness, distraction, being overwhelmed. When we are overwhelmed, the condition of our heart begins to change and we become irritated and agitated. Anyone ever been irritated or agitated? Keep asking me questions, pastor, and you'll find out. Yes, right. And so what happens is what starts is just too much on our plate, too much in our world, too many distractions, too many commitments, now affects our heart and we become overwhelmed and irritated and agitated and we are open to even start questioning the Lord himself. Martha doesn't come in and go, Mary, I need your help. She goes to Jesus and says, why are you letting this happening to me? Tell her to do something to make my life easier and better. And so the condition of Mary's heart begins to change. And she starts questioning the Lord. And she starts blaming others for her situation and her circumstances. Yet who was responsible for the choices she was making? Martha was. I am. You are. I'm the one that said yes to the three Christmas parties on one night. I'm the one that said, yes, we're going to get a gift for every person I've ever met this year. We couldn't have Christmas last year, Tim. We've got to make up for lost time. My decision, my choice. Now, I might feel pressure culturally or peer pressure, right? You got me a gift. I got to get you a gift, that whole thing. But I feel pressure. I may not have time to do all these things, but I feel like I have to do all these things, but yet it is always my choice. And then what begins to develop is our ability to love and care for others becomes limited and quenched. She's busy. She's overwhelmed. Big deal. She wasn't doing anything sinful with all her busyness, but the slippery slope of overcommitting and a pace of life that is not a pace of peace is your heart begins to deteriorate and your relationship with God and others begins to deteriorate. And so now out of your desire maybe to love everyone and to be present all the time, you end up harming your own self and the slippery slope starts to 
unfold. And look what happens next in verse 41. The Lord answered her and said to Martha, he said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and bothered about so many things. And so her life in just like an afternoon has transitioned from welcoming Jesus into her home to Jesus assessing the state of her life as worried and bothered. The ESV translates this anxious and troubled. Oh, so are you weary and troubled? Why? Because it's the most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> Don't worry, when January comes, I'm going to check out completely from any relationships, anything that the church is offering, so I can recover being so joyful in December. <gasps> And so it's a slippery slope to a heart that is anxious and troubled and worried and bothered. And it just happened because she got busy. An author, John Ortberg, says this. Those of you at home can listen. He says that for us, the great danger is not that we will renounce our faith. It is that we will become so distracted and rushed and preoccupied that we will settle for a mediocre version of it. We will just skim our lives instead of actually living them. I don't want that to be true of me. I don't, again, he says that the danger is in us renouncing Christianity and walking away altogether. The danger for us this morning and in December, 20 days away from Christmas morning, is that our lives will become so encumbered and busy that they will become, our hearts will become weary and troubled and tired and we'll still show up for Christmas Eve. We'll send out the cards and if someone has us go caroling, we'll go fa la 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 but the condition of our soul will not be good and our faith and our eyes turn towards Christ, our ability to sit at his feet and listen to his words will be diminished. Our morning devotional time will be rushed and distracted because we've got things to do. Anybody ever felt that way? Yeah. Stop asking me questions, Pastor. We've got our lives to live, so we miss what's important truly about life, and we become... As, Mar as Martha was, worried and troubled, anxious and bothered. And so a good question for us to ask right now, those of you uh, listening at home, if you're still able to pay attention, consider these questions. What is the climate in your house and in your home right now? What's the climate of it? Is it a peaceful place? Is there peace in your home in the mornings and at the end of the day. And I know we got indoor soccer and hockey and school plays and gift giving. But is there peace in your house right now? Is there love? Is the climate of your house right now one where love can be exchanged and received? What is the tone of voice that is most often used in your house? Uh, I think last year, Amazon came out with a activity tracker, like a wrist, like a Fitbit or an Apple Watch that would help you measure your steps and also measure your sleep. And it also had a feature that it would measure your tone to know whether or not you were getting stressed. That is one thing you know nobody in my house was going to buy and wear, for sure. <laughs> but what's the tone of voice? Are you agitated when your spouse asks you a question, when your kids call from the other room? What's the decibel level? Are you living right now on purpose? Are you living intentionally or are you living on autopilot? I pray that we could slow our souls down a little bit this morning and reflect. It's been said that our body doesn't lie. Our body will often show signs of fatigue, anxiety, and being overwhelmed before our brains agree. The tightness in our chest reveals that we are 
worried that we have too much on our plate that we're being pulled too thin. If you ask me, hey, is everything all right? I say, I'm fine, but my body is telling me otherwise. And these are indicators that God has given us to help us realize that we need to slow down. We need to stop our much preparation. We need to admit to ourselves and to others that we are anxious and worried and distracted and troubled. And so Jesus, in his loving way, first in verse 41, he says, Martha, Martha, which was a term of endearment. And then when we get to 42, he says this. He says, you're worried about many things, but only one thing is necessary. For Mary has chosen the good part, which will not be taken away from her. I'm sure Jesus appreciated the meal, the drink, the beauty of the home and the table decorations. Maybe someone washed his feet when he first arrived. But he saw that Martha was missing out on what really mattered in that situation, that people were more important than things, that peace was more important than preparation, that love is more important than checking off the things on your list. If you and I get a Christmas tree, set it up, put the lights on it, Find the ornaments down in the basement. Decorate it. Clean up the pine needles. Take a picture of it. Post it on Facebook and Instagram. But in reality, the whole time you were ripped, angry, frustrated, bitter, rude, and low-level violent. You're doing it wrong. And I like, click, click the photo, and it looked like it was beautiful. But behind the filter was you and the moment that got missed. And Jesus is saying there are things that are more important than others. Some of us are doing things just to do things this month and your soul is being sucked dry. Got to get the tree, got to get the presents, got to get the decorations, got to go to the events, got to travel, got to uh, have some experiences. I've got to send a card to everybody. I'm just going to write my name and put it in the mail. No more. Let's stop this morning. Reevaluate the condition of our soul, the pace of our lives, and recalibrate and make some intentional decisions rather than just go with the flow. Your child, moms and dads and grandparents, aunts and uncles, your child would rather have you playing on the floor with them than the perfect stocking stuffer. Your spouse would feel more loved if you went for a walk together or cook together than if you got them the new whatever. Your friend would appreciate you talking and listening to them without your phone in your hand than a gift card. Your presence is your present. And as you know, this isn't just a message for December. This is a message for all of our lives, that our pace, our attention, our presence matter. And what Jesus is illustrating here to Mary and to Martha is that there are things that are more important than others, and Martha almost missed it. Ultimately, Scripture and the way Jesus lived his life reveals God's heart that more than anything else from you and your life, God is looking for your heart and for you to have a relationship based on love where he can teach you and care for you and spend time with you. And, and, and God, as you know, is most often found in the quiet place. Scripture tells us that uh, the psalmist write, Lord, if I don't want anything in heaven or on earth, you're my portion. You're the thing that I desire most. And this idea of you are my portion, you are what I desire, is what Jesus says here when he says Mary has chosen the good part. That's the Greek word for portion. She's chosen the good and right thing. And so Jesus, in his own life, reminds us of how this is found. Tom, will you go to the next verse? In the early morning, Mark 135, 
while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went away to a secluded place and was praying there. This is a core value of our, of our church culture and, and, and our lives, that Jesus prioritized his relationship with God. Jesus prioritized more than all the other things that had to happen, his time with the Father. And Jesus is calling Martha away from the kitchen and into the living room where she could spend time with him, listening to his words, and to benefit what flowed through Jesus after he spent this time earlier in the morning with the Father. And so I pray that as we consider these things this morning, that we could slow down and uh, get a little quiet. There's a great quote from author Cal Newport that says this, moments of quiet have a power to refocus us. When you sit in the car without the music, when you sit in the living room without the television, when you go for a walk without the earbuds, God can get to you. And you can get to him. Isn't that what we all want? It rarely happens here in a lasting way. The times in my life when I think about how God has impacted me and spoken to me, I've heard a lot of good sermons. I've been in a lot of awesome worship moments. But the times when I know that God has spoken has been in my own personal life, outside of this room. And he wants to spend that time with you. So quickly before we close, I'll give you some suggestions. Go outside for a walk. End of suggestion. Have, time, have some time this week where your phone is off. Okay? Now, no, none of you are writing this down except uh, Marsha. So, and, and Helen. Okay, now you're all going to show me your notebooks. Woohoo, Christian <laughs> and Judy. We'll see them after. But my point is, I'm going to give you four suggestions that I want you to practice this week that might help you or whatever it is that you could think of, but do something in response to this. Don't just be like, oh, yeah, that was really nice, and Victor spoke with that quiet voice, and it was really peaceful. No, no. Take some time this week where your phone is off, not on silent, not on do not disturb, but find a millennial who can show you where the power button is, <laughs> have them help you turn it off, and leave it off. Make or practice some Christmas traditions with your family. One thing that my family and I are going to do, I think tonight or tomorrow, is we're going to get in our car and we're going to drive around our neighborhood where people have beautiful light displays. And we're together. And it's wonderful. And the last one is write a letter to someone. Hand write a letter to someone. It slows you down. It gets you to think of your words. And chances are it will bless the socks off of whoever will receive it. And so as we close this morning, we'll close with this verse from Jesus, this invitation, not just for Christmas, but forever and ever in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, where he says, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus invites you again this morning and through this Advent season to turn your eyes towards him. To remember what's important and needed and necessary. To say yes to things, to say no to things, so that your heart and your soul could be at rest, at peace, and that you could draw near to God. So, Father, we pray that you would help us to hear uh, and find ourselves in this story this morning to minimize preparation, to minimize commitments and burdens if need be so that we may slow down and not miss what is important, not just in Advent, but in life. Help us to be like Mary, to sit at the feet of Jesus, to listen to his words, to remember his story, and follow his way. 
I pray for anyone this morning feeling burdened and overwhelmed. I ask God that you would bring refreshment today. That this is not a sermon and a list of things to do, but an invitation to rest. May your peace be upon us through Jesus Christ. Amen.